Hi everyone, my name is Osman Zubair. I'm a solutions engineer at Talon. Today we're going to be talking about a very common big data use case, that is data lake ingestion. And we'll also talk about how this use case can be built using the Talon big data platform. Let's get started. Today we'll be offloading data from a relational database into Hive, but this process can also be extended for other sources such as files, as well as other targets such as data lakes in the cloud, Amazon S3, Google Storage, or Azure Data Lakes Store. We'll also be using a dynamic metadata-driven framework where we'll have a control table uh, which will have all the necessary metadata telling us where's the source file coming from, where's the target location. We'll be using two tables, customers and orders. We'll be scooping that data into Hive, and as that offloading is taking place, we will also monitor, log, and capture some stats. Now let's take a look at my metadata table. Now this table contains information such as what is the source of my data, whether it's a relational database, whether it's a file, if I'm using a target delimiter, if I'm using any kind of mappers with scoop, if I have to split my data by a certain column, if this is a file, what is the file schema? Before I run the demo, we can also take a look at my target database in Hive, and we can see that there are no tables in this database currently. Let's switch over to the Talent Administration Center user interface. Here, I've already created a task which runs the database ingestion framework. I'm going to go ahead and execute this job. As I click on run, the job goes into a running state and I can right away start seeing logs being populated. Now, these logs will be refreshed every few seconds and I can actually track the status of the job through the logs. I can also monitor my job through a custom dashboard that I have put together, which lets me know how many tables are being offloaded, how many have been completed. I can also see row counts and when the job was completed, as well as any errors that may have come up during the loading process. I can also switch over to the resource manager to take a look at any applications that are being executed. These are native MapReduce applications that are being generated as part of the scoop process. Now, if I switch over to the dashboard and refresh, I will see that there have been two tables that have been offloaded. The orders table with 100,000 records and the customers table with 10,000 records. Let's switch to our Hue interface and we can actually see that the two tables, customers and orders have been populated we can do a simple select query to see the contents of our tables. We can now switch over to the studio to take a look at how this process was built. The first job here is the master job where we use the input connector for MySQL to read in the metadata from the ingestion metadata table. Each row in this table represents uh, a source that needs to be offloaded into a target. We iterate over each record using the T flow to iterate connector and we pass all the necessary information to the child job which is our scoop framework. So information such as any weird conditions, JDBC URL, what is the target database, target directory, any split by any number of mappers. Let's open up the child job, which is our scoop framework. This job has been broken up into various sections. The first of which is the pre-job section. Here we go ahead and log the start time of the job and then we move into a joblet. A joblet is a repeatable set of components which can be applied to one or many jobs. So if I open up the joblet for ingestion stats, the purpose of this is to actually log my ETL stats table with the start of a new loading process. So for example here, I'm logging which table I'm loading as well as the status, which in this case is in progress. 
After the pre-job step has been completed, the next step is to get the count of the source table, which we store into a variable called source record count. Then we execute the scoop command using the tscoop import connector. Uh, to make the connector dynamic, we have created various different parameters under the context tab. You also have the ability to specify a different kind of file formats for your scoop import statement. Under advanced settings, we have specified that the hive table must be created through the hive import command. As part of an error resolution for the scoop command, we have added an on sub job error trigger, which allows us to log an error message into our log in case the scoop command is not successful. If the scoop command is successful, we go ahead and get the target table count and store that into a target variable. We then move into the post job step where we log the time when the job was completed and then another joblet is utilized to log the final status of the job depending on the error code, failed or completed. Here we are evaluating the exit code from the scoop command using an if and else statement and then we go ahead and update the in progress record with a failed or completed. Then we have another joblet called ingestion logs where we leverage the T log catcher connector to capture any Java exceptions, any die or warning messages, and we log this information in the ingestion logs table. Let's summarize what we covered today. We were able to demonstrate how talent can be utilized to build a dynamic metadata driven framework, which allows us to offload hundreds of sources into our data lake with a single pipeline. We were able to do this without any hand coding, just using the drag and drop interface that Talent Studio provides. One of the key advantages of the Talent platform is this open source and extensible architecture. You have a single solution where you can build your jobs and pipelines and deploy them on premise or in the cloud. You have the ability to run them anywhere. This concludes our demonstration for today. Thank you for your time.